You're watching Our Take, and this week we are committed to our money. It is our week-long series dedicated to help you get your finances in order. And today we are talking about rebuilding your finances after divorce. And no doubt Wendy Dang will not be hurting for money when her divorce from media mogul Rupert Murdoch is finalized, right? <laughs> yeah. The payout to his last ex-wife totaled $1 billion, but splitting assets, of course, are not that easy. And here to talk to us about it is is attorney Nicole Valentine. She's also a contributing writer to My Beautiful Life, a lifestyle magazine for women. And her latest piece is When Divorce Happens to Your Beautiful Life, Strategies for Legacy and Wealth Preservation. And Nicole, I understand you found out the difficult way just how you rebuild your wealth after divorce. Tell me a little bit about what happened with you and your now ex. Yes, well, divorce, people look at it as, as death and they go through the morning, same morning cycles that um, you go through when there is a death. And so in that, I thought um, this is something as a couple that we are experiencing and the end of that union is happening. But what about new life? Is there new life coming? And my situation left me with some financial difficulties. And so in that, I said, I am going to reclaim my financial power and confidence and move on and have a second best life. And so that was the, the journey that um, I was on during separation and leading up to divorce. And you two were together for, is it 10 years, 11 years? 11 years. We dated for six and married for five. So we knew each other. We spent a lot of time together. We dreamed together. We hoped together. We got married in Martha's Vineyard and had Ooh, all of the beautiful. Great, How you know, nice. the build up, the launch was there and right. the hope was there. Yeah. And and as we journeyed in our marriage, you know, we had to make some different decisions about that future. And so that's where right. we are and now. And your finances were intertwined. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, we are spending money together. We are building a life together. We're investing in each other's businesses. And we are, we are in that space with each other. And so there's budgets and there's things that you go over as a couple. And in our situation, I was a superwoman. I was doing more than I should have been doing. Mm, and sure. I needed to step back and in my rebuilding, take care of me. Yeah. So I've got to ask you, <laughs> how did you and your husband avoid War of the Roses. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, is, you're right. It's you do. <laughs> there's three ways of kind of dealing with the crisis. You fight, you flight, or you freeze. Sure. And in my situation, um, he was a freezer. You know, so he, you know, just walked away and just didn't communicate and didn't have any battle. And so that did leave me some time to just deal with things on my own. And so that's the way that we kind of ended our situation. All right, so I want to talk about the five steps that you suggest uh, for ladies and men, but we're talking to the ladies today, <laughs> yes. about rebuilding their wealth after divorce. Uh, five steps, the first one that you say is organize and analyze. Yes, I am a lawyer, and so I'm always doing due diligence and making sure that all the records are in place and all the assets are there for a sale or for a merger, and in that, I had to, be my own client. So I looked at my financial universe and in that universe I had lots of stuff. I had I have property, I have gold and diamonds and art oh. and <laughs> Which I did. Can we hang out with that kind of you can resell and things yeah. that have a market. And so I said to myself, there are things that were my separate property, not marital property, that I was able to you know, resell, and I was able to find a market for it. And that is the first step, is looking at everything you have, your assets, your liabilities, you know, what's your debt look like, and pulling all that into one picture, mm -hmm. and then working forward from there. When you talk about organize and analyze, it seems to me that what you're saying is you look at everything that you own, and you really detach emotionally um, from them. So, are we talking about shoes? Are we talking about uh, paintings? Are we, <laughs> Rufus said no, <laughs> we are not talking about the shoes. I mean, yes, it's very easy for me to conceptualize, all right, assets, I think of house, I think of car, I think of investment. But, you, but you're talking more than that. You're talking I'm about anything that can be put on eBay. Personal assets, personal things, personal items that have resale value that you can give away. I mean, I had, 30 vases that I had just because I had lots of flowers that were delivered. I took all the vases to the flower shop and they gave me two months worth of, of flowers. 
in exchange for that. So those were things that they're, they're things and they have value to someone else and you can, you can reclaim that value and use it for what you need to use it for. I needed to pay my mortgage and so I was focused on paying my mortgage and paying down debt. So I looked at the Gucci watch and said, I don't need that. I have a cell phone that has the time on it. I'm good. So I looked at things very differently when I had a mission that I was on. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely looking at things through a different prism. Okay, step two, you say be resourceful. That's in my blood. I mean, my parents are uh, ex-military and they are mission oriented. They are resourceful. They do a lot with a little and they are blessed for it. And so I said to myself, how can I get some extra income this summer? It was last summer that this was going on. I have a condo in Harlem. It is a great tourist destination. And I put my condo through the Airbnb, sabbatical homes, home away networks to, to see if I could get a renter for the summer. And I did. And I got four months of rental income that was double my mortgage. And I was able to pay my mortgage and pay down debt. And that was the resourcefulness. And I stayed with friends. I traveled and spent sure. time with yeah. them. Everyone yeah. has an extra bedroom. They just do, and they want, they want you to be with them, and that's the blessing that I had of spending time with friends during this time. And what I find really fascinating about that particular example is that with that extra home, you could have easily moved into that place. You know, your husband or your ex-husband is in one place while you're, doing, while you're going through the separation process, but you really looked at this as an asset. I mean, clearly it had been on the uh, organize and analyze list, yes. and then it's resourceful because now you're going to utilize. So you'd sooner sleep on a friend's couch and recommend that you sleep with a, 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 at a friend's place or yes. family's place and put your space up on the market to rent. Yes, and the friend that I stayed with, she's an artist. And so I was living in a gallery for the summer. And I woke up every morning with this beautiful artwork around me. And I said, wow, this is, this is living. This, well, is, sure. this is my life. This is my next life. Really embracing the experience that I'm in and loving where I'm at at the time I'm there. And in an odd way, this is actually a superb way to handle things because so many of these places, your home, you have attachment to it, you have memories of you and your husband. It's very painful. It, it's a kind of a good thing to rent the place and go somewhere brand new with no memories. I mean, that makes Detach this emotional power. detachment a lot easier. I want to get. Did. I want to get to step three. Step three, I think, is a, a lot of what you're already talking about, which is be creative. Yeah, be creative. So we didn't fight. So I was able to save oh, money. That was on one legal divorce. Right? No I mean, fighting. No fighting. I mean, I I'm a lawyer, and so I understand you can rack up the bills and you can spend lots and lots of money on fighting and stalling each other and sure. fighting over hidden assets. I didn't have that, but I thought about what I was able to do with the money that I didn't spend on the fight. So it, within my business, I'm building my business, I'm building an app, I'm able to write a check to something that is going to have a longer shelf life okay. than a fight. And so that is, for me, about being constructive rather than destructive with your money. And finally, steps four and five, share and reframe. Yes. So I shared my personal vulnerabilities with lots of friends who mm -hmm. I love, love, love. And in that experience, one, I learned that some of my friends were, were divorced before and I didn't even know it because mm -hmm. divorce, right. you bury it. And yeah. some people say, oh, oh, actually, I was divorced. I'm on my second husband. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. I've known <laughs> you for years. Um, and then the second thing is financial, you know, help that I did get by sharing my issues. Um, people do not want to sh mix money and friendship. You know, they don't want to loan money to friends. Yes, that's but true. But people do loan money to friends with a plan. If you have a plan and you say, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm going to pay you back, this is my monthly income and this is what I'm going to do with it, I had friends that loaned me money and said, pay me back in five years. So, and I paid them back in six months. So that was part of the, the journey of sharing. And then, the, and then the reframing is, my beautiful life. You can still have a beautiful life after a divorce, and that is the journey that I'm on. And you have certainly proved it and given us some very useful information. I want to thank you so much, Nicole thank Valentine. You. Thank and you. I also want to thank my guest co-host, Rupa Michelinini. You have been so much fun, and I hope you'll come back. I can't wait. And I hope you'll come back as well, Nicole. I like you so much. <laughs> yeah, I like you too. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, ladies, thank and you. thank you for watching. And keep it right here. I'm Christina Brown, and you are watching Our Take.